So what if I told you guys that there's a nutrient that's way, way better than light malt extract? We use light malt extract in our agar, in our LCs, in pretty much everything we do. But when we're cultivating mushrooms, there's a lot of byproduct. And one of those byproducts can actually be used to replace light malt extract. It's this right here. This, what's in this flask, is way better than light malt extract, and the mushrooms are going to take to this like wildfire. So I'm going to show you guys what this is and how you could use it in your agar or your LC mix right now. Let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on Chip Team? First of all, I want to welcome you guys back to a brand new video. Now, if this is your first time here on Willie's World, welcome to the Trip Team family, TTF, my familia. I love you guys and thank you guys so much for always showing that support, watching my videos, liking my videos, commenting, supporting me over on Patreon and social media. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I couldn't do this without you guys. Now, if this is your first time here or maybe you've been watching for a while, if you found that this video helped you and you gained some knowledge and some benefit from this video, just go down below, hit that subscribe button and the bell off to the side so that way you guys know when I drop a new video. That's the cheapest, freest way to show your support is just by hitting that subscribe button. And I want to thank every single one of you guys that do support me here on YouTube and over on Patreon. Patreon social media right here. If you guys want a private library, one-on-one -on -one help with me. So if you guys are getting into cultivation, doing extractions, you guys just want to talk, whatever. I'm here to help you one-on-one -on -one and you can get that benefit by joining my Patreon. You also get access to a private community of thousands of members that are into the same thing that you're into a private library, community meetings, a private Reddit. There's so many benefits over there, so make sure you guys go check it out. Everything will be in a pinned comment down below. All the links, you can just click it and check it all out. Social media, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff is right there. Now, if you guys are following me on Instagram or Twitter, make sure you're following a real person. There's a lot of fake accounts, people that pretend to be me. These are my only accounts right here. So if you don't see it here on the screen, it's not me, unfortunately. And anytime I do a giveaway on YouTube or anywhere else, make sure it's a real account that's replying to you if you've won. If you get hit up by somebody and they say, hit me up on Telegram, you won, you just need to pay the shipping or this or that, it's absolute BS. If you guys ever win anything from one of my giveaways, it's 100% free. We don't charge you nothing. We don't ask for shipping or any of that crap. So don't fall for it. So what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about a nutrient that you guys could use in your LCs and your agar. So for a long time, there's been a handful of nutrients that we use for agar and LCs. Probably the most popular is light malt extract or extra light malt extract. It's probably the most common and everybody uses it in the mycology field. But there's also other nutrients like peptone, caro syrup, things like that. There's a bunch of different nutrients you guys could use, but I always tell you guys it's best to stay with a grain-based nutrient than a sugar-based nutrient like caro syrup. If you guys make your LC or your agar with caro syrup, when you guys go to transfer that agar or LC over to grains, there's a transition period, there's a shock period because now the mycelium needs to learn that it's not eating a sugar-based nutrient no more. Now it's converting over to a grain-based nutrient. So there could be a shock period or it could even stall out and not grow on that new nutrient. So if you keep a grain-based nutrient all the way through, you're gonna get much better results. So a lot of people like myself choose to use light malt extract because it's a grain-based nutrient. So when we transfer it over to grains, it just picks up and goes. We don't need to wait for any transition or shock period or anything like that. So light malt extract has been one of the best nutrients for a very long time. But in mycology, we have a lot of waste, right? We have a lot of stuff that we make and we have a lot of byproducts. And one of those byproducts is this right here. Right here is grain water. So as you guys know, when you start making mushroom grain spawn, you guys have to soak your grains unless you do a no soak, no simmer method. But this right here is a byproduct of soaking your grains. So we soak our grains for 24 hours, we bring them to a boil, 
and then we strain the moat, and usually all this nutritious goodness goes to waste. It goes down the drain. But not with me. What I do is I actually take my strainer, I put a five gallon bucket under the strainer, and then I dump all my grains into the strainer and I collect all the grain water. This grain water is the best nutrient that you guys could use for your agar or your liquid cultures. So I'm gonna show you how to take that grain water and turn it into agar. No more light malt extract, none of that. We're gonna be using grain water as our nutrient. And I'm telling you the mycelium responds to it so good. It just picks up and rips through the agar. But for now, let's jump in front of the table and let's talk about the ingredients you guys are gonna to need to make some grain water agar. The first thing you guys are gonna need is your grain water. Like I said, guys, when I prep my grains, when they soak overnight and I bring them to a boil, Instead of just dumping my grains straight into the strainer and letting all that goodness go down the drain, I actually collect it in a five gallon bucket and then I save my grain water. This is some of the most nutritious stuff for your mycelium, for your mushrooms. So make sure you guys save this because it will come in handy and we're not creating any waste. We're actually reusing all of our byproducts. The next thing you guys are gonna need is your agar dishes. So I have a sleeve of 25 100 millimeter agar dishes. Now, if you guys wanna use 60 millimeter or 90 millimeter, it really doesn't matter. Use whatever agar dishes you guys wanna use. Now, if you follow this recipe to a T, depending on how you pour, you're gonna get anywhere between 20 and 25 100 millimeter agar dishes poured. The next thing you guys are gonna need is your agar. So this is the brand of agar that I've been using for a couple years now. I really, really like it. If you guys want, I'll put all the links down below. So if you guys wanna use the same product that I'm using in this video, you guys could also do that. This is a really great 100% organic agar. It's absolutely amazing and I've never had an issue with this agar. Now, you guys could also use any of the brand that you guys wanna use. There's telephone brand and other types of agar powders. Just be careful, there is scams out there where people are selling powdered up plastic as agar. It's happened to me, it's happened to a lot of other mushroom cultivators. We ordered a big bulk order of agar powder and when we got it, something was off, something wasn't right and it actually ended up being powdered up plastic that they were trying to sell off as agar. So just be careful, use reputable companies because you guys want good product. The next thing you guys are gonna need is a scale. You just need a scale that could weigh grams. It really doesn't matter what type of scale it is, as long as it could weigh grams. The next thing you guys are gonna need is a PC safe flask, bottle, or jar. Whatever you guys wanna use, just make sure it's PC safe. If you guys aren't using a PC and you're gonna steam sterilize, that's also fine, but you guys need to make sure that it could handle the temperatures. And the last thing you guys are gonna need is your pressure cooker. So I'm using a pressure cooker, but if you guys wanted to steam sterilize, boil sterilize, it's perfectly fine. You could do all of that with agar because it's a liquid, it sterilizes extremely easy. Now, if this was grains or something like that, like whole grains, then you guys would have to PC, but because this is a liquid, there's multiple different ways to sterilize it, but the easiest way to sterilize is by using a pressure cooker. Once you guys have all those ingredients together, you guys are all set and we can start to make our grain water agar. All right guys, so as you can see, I have everything right in front of me. And the first thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna have to measure out 500 milliliters of your grain water. Now the grain water, depending on how long it's been sitting, might have a lot of sediment at the bottom. So just flip it upside down a couple times and just get everything all mixed up. Now, once you guys do that, you guys want to heat up your mix. So bring it to the microwave, bring it to a hot pot of water, and you guys want to bring your grain water up to temperature. So I like getting mines to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This is just going to help the agar disperse and dissolve into the mix a lot easier. But if you guys don't want to heat it up, you don't need to. Just make sure you shake it up really, really good because you guys want to make sure that there's no clumps of agar, that are dry pockets of agar that are sitting off into the corner of your beaker, your jar, your flask, your bottle, whatever you guys are using to mix up your agar. Once you guys have it warm, now what you guys want to do is you want to measure out 10 grams of agar powder. 
Make sure it's 10 grams exactly, not under. If it's under, then your mix might still stay liquid after you're done pressure cooking and it won't solidify the right way. So make sure you guys mix up 10 grams exactly into 500 milliliters of your grain water. Now, once you guys have everything in your container that you're gonna use to PC in, now you guys just shake it up really, really good, make sure everything's dissolved, and now you guys could pressure cook. So I'm gonna pressure cook mine for 45 minutes at 15 PSI. After the 45 minutes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut off my pressure cooker and I'm gonna pull off the weight so that all the steam runs out immediately. I don't wanna let my agar mix sit inside the pressure cooker until it cools down. If you do that, remember, it's gonna keep cooking and you could ruin your agar mix, you could burn it. So after the 45 minutes, you guys are gonna turn off the heat, you're gonna pull the weight off your PC, you're gonna let all the pressure let out of the PC, and then as soon as it's safe to open, you guys wanna open it up and just put your agar on a countertop somewhere where it could cool down. Remember, before you bring it into your clean environment where it's sterile, you guys want to wipe it down really, really good with some isopropyl or some disinfectant. You guys want to wipe down the bottom of the flask. After everything's all done and we're in our clean space, I'm going to show you guys how to pour your green water agar. All right, guys, so our agar is done and it's cool to the touch. One thing you guys want to do when you pour your agar is you want to make sure that it's still liquid but cool enough to touch. This will help condensation big time. So when you guys go to pour, you shouldn't be burning your hands. It shouldn't be steaming hot. You should be able to touch it, but it's still liquid. That's what you guys want if you want to keep condensation in your agar dishes down. So I'm just going to pour a couple of these plates, then we'll let them solidify, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. As always, make sure you guys are working in a sterile environment, that your space is clean. And pretty much what you want to do is just eyeball it. You want to make sure there's enough agar to cover the bottom of the plate, but not too much. If you don't pour enough, then what will end up happening is it will actually dry out. So you guys need to make sure you have the perfect pour. It could take a little bit of practice to get this down. And then stack your plates as you guys pour them. That's gonna also help keep condensation down. So there you go guys, I poured a couple dishes for you. I'm gonna continue pouring these and then after it solidifies, we'll come back and we'll check it out. All right guys, so we have our agar plates. They've cooled, they've solidified and now we're gonna check it out real quick and see what it looks like. So you guys could see what grain water agar looks like. And that's it right there. As you guys could see, looks great. And mycelium responds extremely well to this. And it's a byproduct, right? So if you guys are getting this anyways, because you guys are doing grains, why not use it in your agar or your LC and save yourself some money? You guys really don't need to pick up any light malt extract if you guys don't want to. You guys could use your grain water every single time. I've grown Penelius on this, Cubensis, um, oyster mushrooms, reishi, all different types of mushrooms, and they all respond extremely well to grain water agar. So that's it right there, and that's how I make mines, and hopefully you guys can take this tech and run with it. And that's how you make grain water agar. Now, if you guys wanna use this in your liquid cultures, only use half the amount of liquid in grain water, and then the rest of the liquid will be fresh water. You guys don't want to use 100% grain water because it will become too murky and too difficult to see what's going on in the LC. So if you guys were going to do one liter liquid cultures, you guys would use a half a liter grain water and a half a liter fresh water. So that way it lightens up really, really good. And that's going to work really, really well for your liquid cultures. I've been doing it on liquid cultures. I've been doing it with agar for a couple years now. And it works really, really well. So I wanted to share this with you guys because I think you guys will get a lot of benefit out of it. And like I said, 
We're recycling our waste. We're not wasting any water. We're not wasting any nutrients. We're reusing it in a different stage of the cultivation process. So if you guys want to start doing this, I know you guys will love it and you'll find a ton of benefit out of it. And the best part about it is you really don't need to buy light malt extract no more. Light malt extract isn't expensive, but it isn't cheap. But it's a cost that you guys could cut and use the grain water instead of the light malt extract. It's something that you're already going to have. So why go out and purchase something that you really don't need? The only benefit to the light malt extract is it keeps your agar, it keeps your LCs really, really clear so that you guys could see everything that's going on. But when it comes to agar, it really doesn't matter because we do carbon agar, we color our agar, we do all types of things. So if you have a brown agar, it really doesn't matter. If anything, it's a benefit because it gives some good contrast to the mycelium that's growing. And you can see the light through it perfectly fine if you guys had to backlight it. Now with the LCs, if you guys use half grain water, half fresh water, it's gonna be a perfect color. It's not gonna be too dark, it's not gonna be too light. You guys will be able to see all the mycelium and everything that's going on inside the LC just fine. Now one thing I've noticed about using grain water as my nutrient instead of light malt extract is the grain water just speeds up the growth. I don't know what it is, I don't know if the mycelium just prefers it over the light malt extract, but typically, if I lay a light malt extract in a grain water agar dish down at the same time with the same genetics, the grain water agar dish will beat it out by at least five days, full colonization. So it speeds things up and the mycelium responds to it really well. So I find that using the grain water as my nutrient is probably the best option really at the end of the day, aside from saving money, aside from recycling a byproduct of mushroom cultivation, the mycelium also prefers it over the light malt extract. So you guys will find a ton of benefit in this. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, guys, it's because of you guys, all of you guys that support me over on Patreon. If it wasn't for you guys, these videos would not be possible. We don't make any money here on YouTube. So it's you guys that keep the content coming. Every dollar we make over there on Patreon goes into giveaways, it goes into getting better cameras, creating more content, doing fun things for you guys. It's not going into our pockets. So it's you guys that support the movement. And if it wasn't for you guys, like I said, none of this would be possible because without you guys, I'm nothing. That's really what it is. Everything you guys do for me and for the movement is absolutely amazing. And I just wanna say thank you guys from the bottom of my heart because without you, there is no me. I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good, namaste.